Voilà. Ça, c'est du gaz de broussaille. Et ça, c'est de la lumière de broussaille. This isn't really a tale about decaying wood. It's about a lost design, buried under decades of convenience and industry. Once, a man built a silent power station in the woods, fueled not by coal, not by oil, but by decomposition. He unlocked an invisible current hiding in plain sight, and the results bordered on unbelievable. Warmth in the bitter cold, electricity without a single wire, barren land turned fertile, all of it driven by compost. And yet, most people have never even heard his name. Why was his discovery ignored? Let's uncover the mystery. The hidden heat of decay. In the 1970s, among the forests of southern France, a forester named Jean Pan stumbled onto something unusual. He had stacked chipped wood, not for firewood, but for storage. A few days later, the pile was hot. Not lukewarm, truly hot. There was no fire, no engine, no sunlight. Yet the heap radiated heat as if burning from within. Intrigued, Jean watched closely. Each time he wetted the brushwood and left it, the same thing happened, again and again. It wasn't sorcery. It was science, biology at work. Microorganisms were feasting on the dead wood through aerobic decomposition. In breaking it down, they released energy, energy you could feel, measure, and even capture. That's when it struck him. Maybe this wasn't just a strange quirk of nature. Maybe it was the seed of something much bigger. Jean wasn't funded. He wasn't an engineer. Just a stubborn woodsman with curiosity and a vision. In those steaming brush piles, he didn't just see heat. He saw possibility. The kind of possibility that could power homes. Maybe even change the world. A forest, a law, and a turning point. Jean Pan never sought fame. He only wanted to live simply with his wife in the rugged hills of Provence. Managing 590 acres on a shoestring, he had to improvise. One of his first discoveries came from necessity. Unable to afford straw bedding for his goats, he used chipped brushwood instead. To his surprise, it worked better. The goats stayed healthier, and their manure, mixed with wood chips, turned into compost that transformed his thin soil into rich, fertile earth. Soon, his garden was thriving. Enormous watermelons, towering tomatoes, even exotic vegetables flourished in sandy dolomite with no irrigation. The compost held moisture, fed roots, and gave life where none should have existed. Then came a shift. The French government introduced wildfire prevention laws, forcing landowners to clear brush. Jean suddenly had more wood than he could ever use. Most people would have burned it. Jean chipped it, soaked it, and left it to rot. That's when the heat came. And with it, an idea that would alter his life forever. It was no longer about bedding goats or improving soil. The forest had revealed something else, a new kind of fuel, building the biomealer. Jean Pan wasn't content with observing. He wanted to harness the heat. And so, the biomealer was born, a compost-powered heater made not with machines, but with care, patience, and mountains of chipped wood. At first, it was just a crude heap, but over time, Jean discovered that compacting the pile into a dense, circular mound kept heat in and sped decomposition. Inside these reactors, Jean packed 40 tons of wood chips, threaded through them 650 feet of coiled pipe. Cold groundwater entered one side, and by the time it emerged, it was 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot water, day and night, for up to 18 months enough to heat his 1,000-square-foot home and provide endless hot water without burning a single log. And he went further. In the pile's center, 
Jean placed a sealed tank of soaked brushwood. As it broke down, it released methane gas, which he collected in inner tubes. That gas ran his stove, his generator, even his car. This wasn't a compost heap anymore. It was a living engine, silent and steady. A reactor powered by rot, but driven by vision. Off-grid living. Gene wasn't testing a theory. He was living it. The methane ran his oven and stovetop for a year. A small generator converted the rest into electricity. It wasn't much, around 100 watts, but enough to charge batteries, light his home, and run essentials. Even transport wasn't left out. Gene converted his car to run on compressed methane stored in roof tanks. It wasn't glamorous, but it gave him 60 miles of clean range. From cooking and bathing to driving and lighting, his life ran on rotting wood. And when the energy faded, nothing went to waste. The decomposed chips became rich compost, spread over his fields to restart the cycle. What Jean had built wasn't just a machine. It was a loop, a closed circle that produced energy, restored land, and left nothing behind. Recognition and silence. Jean Pan's work did catch attention. Reporters, scientists, and energy pioneers came from around the globe. In 1981, Reader's Digest featured him. His book sold more than 100,000 copies. Some thought his design might spread. Methane from compost, sustainable forestry, off-grid energy. One writer even called it the future of farming and power. And then it slipped away. Not because it failed. It worked brilliantly, but it took effort, space, patience, a hectare of land, a wood chipper, and weeks of labor. It wasn't a switch you could flip. Governments didn't back it. Corporations couldn't profit from it. Unlike wind or solar, there was no trillion-dollar industry in compost heat. Just a man, a forest, and a pile of brush. Jean had revealed a radical model. Small, local, circular. But the world chose scale, convenience, and profit. His forest power plant was forgotten. The lost chance. Now, the world debates clean energy, rising bills, and depleted soil. But decades ago, one man quietly solved parts of it. John Payne's biomiler produced heat, fuel, electricity, and fertilizer, without pollution, mining, or emissions. Just nature doing its work. But instead of scaling his model, we doubled down on grids, fossil fuels, and industry. And as wildfires worsen, fertilizer prices climb, and energy strains grow, Gene's compost reactors look more relevant than ever. It wasn't just energy, it was fire prevention, soil recovery, a model for independence. Yes, it wasn't easy. You couldn't buy it off the shelf, but what it gave in return was freedom and a relationship with land that no utility bill can provide. So why don't we use it? Maybe because it wasn't meant for corporations. It was meant for people. The system with no waste. Gene's design was astonishing not only because it worked, but because it left nothing behind. Every stage had value. Wood chips gave heat, then fuel, then turned to fertile compost. Methane powered appliances, then burned clean. Clearing brush even reduced fire danger. It was a circle something industry still struggles to copy. Instead of mines, factories, or rare minerals, John relied on twigs, branches, and waste wood. And the result wasn't depletion, it was renewal, richer soil, safer forests, a freer life. At a time when clean tech still leaves waste, solar panel debris, battery mining scars, Jean's pile of compost stands apart. It gave more than it took, Maybe that's the truth we've missed. Maybe real breakthroughs don't look futuristic. Maybe they look like rot, quietly working miracles. Jean Payne didn't invent some machine of tomorrow. He simply listened to the earth 
and copied it. His system wasn't flashy, profitable, or simple, but it worked and still does. In today's scramble for energy and food security, his forgotten forest reactor feels like a roadmap we ignored. Maybe the future isn't about scaling up. Maybe it's about scaling back towards systems that restore instead of consume. His legacy isn't a product, it's a challenge. So the question remains, what would you build if all you had was time, patience, and a pile of wood?